if you're feeling fed up because your walks are so constantly sped up, if you're thinking to yourself, this, wow. can't, this can't be right. My leash is always tight. If you feel like being dragged is a drag, then you've come to the right spot. Tonight, we're going to talk about how to make your walks rock. He didn't get the okay on any of those. In this episode of The Train Station, I'm Ken Steep. I'm Cal McCann. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. <laughs> The more ridiculous, the better for these <laughs> openings, I feel. It's uh, a Did lot of fun. Did you make that up on the spot? Well, I thought as I was sitting down here, I was thinking about okay, I was like, going to say, wow. Cold opens are my favorite part. <laughs> and then we get into the training, which is hopefully your favorite part. And tonight we're going to be talking about walking on leash. It's going to be a subscriber Q&A. We're going to talk about how you can fix your leash walking training. And in tonight's show, we're going to go over... We've kind of put together a different way of thinking about your leash walking that you can apply to whatever stage you're at. And this is what we love doing here in the train station. Maybe this is your first time here and you're like, who are these two blue shirted uh, people? Well, my name's Ken Steep. This is Kale McCann. We're professional dog trainers at McCann Dogs. And at McCann Dogs every week, we help nearly 600 dog owners to overcome the same dog training challenges that you have. We help nearly 1,000 online students every day in our online training. And we've seen that we've seen how tough it can be mm -hmm. when you don't have a plan, you don't have a strategy for fixing your leash walking. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about tonight. Now, we do have a couple of fun things to talk about. Uh, number one. My nose is running, so I've got a little tissue. But That's not fun. That's not fun at all. Number one, we just launched a new channel. Now, if you leave the, your home and, you know, your dogs, uh, you know, maybe you go to work and you leave your dog for a bit and you put on music. Well, that's something that we did. We just got back from Florida. Or maybe you don't even know that that's the thing that you could do. Yeah. I mean, this is something we do for all our puppies. Yeah. Always. We'll start playing music for them. Well, we just launched a new channel here on YouTube called McCann Dogs Music. And at the end of tonight's show, you're going to automatically get sent there. But there's also a link in the description. But what we've done is we've collaborated with a couple of music producers and we've created music that is good to fill that space. It's good to help your dog to be more settled and relaxed as you're working on uh, whatever, you know, maybe working on crate training. Maybe they're just hanging out mm -hmm. at home, but we used it. Kayla and I just got back from Florida where we were at the uh, U.S. Open for dog agility. Kayla got two gold medals. Mm -hmm. uh, Three. Three gold medals. Three gold medals and two silver medals. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. I mean, yeah. no big deal. I mean, I'm talking to the 21-time world <laughs> champion of dog agility. Uh, so uh, congratulations on yeah, that. But while fun. we were away, yeah. there were a couple times where we'd have to leave the place we were staying and we'd always put on the music. Yeah, yeah. Um, our one little border collie, Beeline, who I was competing with, she can be a little bit sound sensitive. And um, one of the ways that we really find she relaxes a lot more, especially when we leave her, yeah. is if we leave music on. Totally. So, um, yeah, we just left it on and put a little fireplace background uh, going on on the TV. And yeah. she just just chilled out and was uh, was super happy. So it's something that we use when we're traveling a lot, but Ken and I also listen to it while we ate dinner tonight. It's true. <laughs> um, it's just really relaxing. I, I want to mention a huge thank you to Rebecca Greenspan for dropping the super chat. Our, our moderators will keep an eye on that uh, and see well, if you have a question. Um, Grace Martinez, welcome uh, to the McCann Dogs as a heart dog supporter. Bonnie nice. Kraft, also a heart dog supporter. Cool. Um, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Now tonight's going to be all about Q&A. Uh, and the first question that I want to ask you is where are you joining the train station from? It's so much fun to find out where everyone and, you know, pops in from uh, all over the world. It's also an opportunity for me to brush up on my uh, geography. geography. Uh, I wasn't good at it in school. So uh, let us know. Um, it's interesting because, as I mentioned earlier, we have um, uh, students from all over the world in our online programs. And, uh, you know, someone in, uh, you know, uh, in... New York City in Manhattan, for example, mm -hmm. has the same challenges as someone in Calgary, Alberta, or, you know, in the uh, rural sections. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of like some of the really uh, uh, unusual places, it, places that we've recently got, gotten students from literally all over the world. I think every yeah. continent is covered except for Antarctica and the Arctic. No, we have uh, students from Japan. We have students from Israel. We have yeah. students from every state in the u.s and, and everywhere yeah and, and you know dog training can feel frustrating i know because i was a frustrated dog owner that ended up having to go to mccann dogs as a student to learn uh you know what i can do with this wild and crazy mm -hmm. dog she would drag me down the street and um you know i get it i I understand what it feels like when you're like, oh, I've tried everything. It's not working or mm -hmm. I don't know what to try. 
because this definitely uh, needs to be changed. I think it's important to note, too, that, you know, we see this a lot. We have lots of students, so we see a lot of um, the same issues. But as we've branched out to students all over the world, we've started to recognize that people are struggling with walking on training in every single country in the world. It's, it's not totally. a um, it's not something that you're alone with. Yeah. And, it, and it's super frustrating as well because we want to enjoy our dogs. We want to be able to take them for a walk and take them places and not be dreading having to walk our dogs to exercise them or socialize them or whatever we're doing. So um, I think we'll debunk a lot of those things uh, for you tonight in our lessons. Well, that's what I loved about learning about the McCann method. And what I love about our training is that we make it fun for the owner. We make it Mm -hmm. fun for the dog. And when you have a dog that's like actually enjoying the training, when they want to listen to you, boy, oh boy, that can speed up the learning process. Yes. So um, we're going to talk a little bit tonight about some of the things that you can do mm-hmm. to help your dog with your leash walking in a little different ways. Stuff that you can take in tonight and literally start on your next walk. Maybe yep. it's after the train station. You know, maybe tonight you're going to go for a quick walk. Maybe you'll have a little training session in your living room later. Totally, yeah, which is <laughs> a great place to start. Yeah. And we're going to talk about why in just That's a second. That's where Five Alive learned how to walk on a leash is up and down our hallway. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I see lots of people joining in. I see, uh, let's see. Uh, we've got uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Sydney, Australia, Florida, Vancouver, Mel- Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, Brooklyn, New York, Indianapolis, Indiana, Vermont, Kingston, Ontario. Thanks for joining us from Kingston. Allie, one of our heart dog supporters. Uh, Mexico, Missouri. Never heard of that, Tracy. I'm going to look that up. Oakville, not too far away. Tupelo, to, to Mississippi. Also, I'm going to have to look that one up, too. Cool. Um, uh, Queensland, Australia, Paris, Ontario, British Columbia, Sweden, nice. Los Angeles, California, Cumbria, nice. Cumbria UK. Uh, Gu- Guira, New South Wales. I don't know. That's probably completely incorrect. Let me know, Suke, where that where that is. Guira. It's a really interesting name of a place. Mark Faulkner, uh, one of our Hard Talk supporters. Hello from Fredericton, New Brunswick. Nice. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Let's dive in to the first thing I want you to think about when it comes to your leash walking training. If you feel like, boy, oh boy, this is not going right. The first thing that I want you to consider <laughs> is, is your dog ready? We're going to talk about c- sort of four letters that represent, uh, you know, things that you need to think about when it comes to your leash walking. And we just call it REDS, R-E-D-S. So in the R... Is your dog ready? This is probably, this is probably when people, I mean, this is the beginning of our uh, training, but this is when people fail first. Yes. Is thinking that their dog is ready to go for a walk. Taking your dog for a walk and teaching your dog to walk on leash. You might've heard instructor Steve say that in, in one of the videos. They're very different things. Very different. Yeah. And I think sometimes what happens is people get a dog and they just think, well, I have a dog. I have to walk it. And so you walk it. And, you know, we don't realize that you actually have to train a dog to walk nicely on a leash. There are very few dogs that just naturally don't pull on the leash. They're um, sometimes when they're really, really little, when they're puppies, they don't pull as much because they don't have the confidence or the um, life experience. And they just they're sort of, you know, in that stage where they naturally want to follow you. But um, as you'll soon find out, if you're not there yet, that goes away. <laughs> that goes away and they get curious and they want to kind of, you know, be in, be in charge and they want to get wherever they want to first. And they do natural, normal puppy things. And so that's when the pulling begins. And unfortunately, what happens is people just assume that, well, I have to walk my dog. So they rehearse allowing their dogs to pull them around the park or around the block or wherever it might be over and over and over again, day in and day out. Um, And they just get frustrated when they don't actually realize that there is um, some training involved in teaching your dog to walk on a leash. So um, we're going to get into this in more detail, but basically, are you ready means are, it, does your dog understand their expectation well enough that you could actually go out for a walk and have the walk be um, what your expectation of walking would be. Can yeah. they walk on a loose leash? Do they listen to you? Do they stop and sit when you ask? Do they leave distractions? Do they look at you when you ask? All of those things. And um, the answer to a lot of those questions initially when you have a young dog is no, because they haven't learned those things yet. So, um, you know, and a lot of people will say, well, if I can't walk my dog, what am I supposed to do yeah. with my dog? With my dog's crazy. We, we had uh, a, so we'll talk about that too. Well, we had a new group of grade one students in last night for their first lesson and someone uh, 
pulled me aside uh, during the break, and we were talking a little bit about what he should do. He's got this uh, four-month-old uh, 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 Aussie, I think, a uh, little mm-hmm. Aussie, uh, full of energy. He, he said um, what he's really looking forward to is the ability to take her up to the cottage and mm-hmm. have her off leash. But right now, because he's busy and you know has to work and do all sorts of things, he started taking her on walks. And we talked about why that's not a good idea mm-hmm. at this point in her training. Mm-hmm. And the results that he, the, the, the bad habits that she's learning. We talked yeah. a little bit about that. And those are two different things, off-leash listening and uh, leash walking, like in at a heel position, mm-hmm. but they're kind of related. And Very related. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about why that's yeah. uh, why you need to understand that. Why mm-hmm. like one element of your training can really impact uh, other yeah. aspects. Of well, it. if they can't listen well enough, enough to you to walk on a loose leash when you ask them to, most dogs are not going to listen well enough to be off leash yeah. uh, when you ask them to. So it all starts with walking a leash. That's the basic of of a lot of the training that we do, which leads to great verbal control, <coughs> which me. leads to lots of freedom for the dog totally. once they learn to listen. Yeah. So we're talking about getting started with focus first before we do that i saw um uh our super ch- or our uh, uh commenter from oh i may have lost it now sue sue k says pronounced gyra it's in the northern tablelands of new south wales about halfway between sydney and brisbane uh but inland a bit oh cool very cool yeah that's neat i enjoy this stuff uh brandon kirk very cool thanks for coming a heart dog supporter so we're talking about uh, getting some attention. That's really what this boils down mm-hmm. to. And so often we see uh, pe- or have people ask or, or see in like the comments of our YouTube videos that we publish, um, oh, well, try this with a wild and crazy dog. You know, try this leash walking with a dog who's mm-hmm. like completely uh, unruly. And we wouldn't. That's not where you start with a dog like mm-hmm. that. The first steps are sometimes the worst steps and you need to fix those. So what you need those first steps to be are great. Mm-hmm. Maybe that that means do you have a dog let me know in the chat do you have a dog that as soon as you get the leash uh, and go to the door they go totally crazy or maybe you have this habit of saying walkies or something <laughs> like that and the dog goes completely haywire mm-hmm. well you're really setting yourself up to struggle with your leash walking if that's the case and we have some tactics that we can talk about for getting some control we want to start with focus first we do this You've seen us do this in some of our puppy videos. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about like when the puppy's able to go downstairs and things like that. Like what do we do when we're going to go outside? Yeah. Sometimes for some puppies, um, it will actually start when you take them out of their crate as well because we um, mm. will attach a leash to our Good puppy's uh, collar the moment they come out of the crate so our puppies are never completely off leash when they're learning. So, um, you know, when they come out of their crate, we will usually, you know, lure them. They don't know how to do anything yet. So we would lure them into a sitting position using some food, reward them generously for holding that sit and then practice hooking their leash on rewarding them again so they learn to sit patiently without nipping and biting at us and that becomes sort of a a daily routine Um, it happens multiple times a day because you have to take your puppy outside so many so many times Um, but the other thing that's really helpful for initiating some you know respect with the leash and just good attention is you know before you go outside when you open the door don't allow your puppy to just barge out the door Um, but again being a puppy or it and I should preface that anything that we say today also will apply to um, older dogs. So when I say puppy, I'm talking about puppies that are like under four months right now. This is when we would start a lot of these um, trainings. However, there's going to be many of you that are on the call today that's like, my dog's a year old and they don't know this. So you just start right at the basics, the same way that you would that you would with a puppy. So not don't get too hung up on the age. Um But anyway, so when you go outside, open the door, start opening the door first. And again, just encourage your puppy into a sitting position. I wouldn't ask them a million times. I would just say it once and I would use something something to motivate my dog. Treats are are a great option. I would lure them into a sitting position and just reward them for a few uh, moments on a loose leash, even paying attention to me so that the dog's learning. When you see a door open, the first instinct is not to run out. It's to sit and pay attention to me. Um, But I'm basically molding and shaping my dog into what I want them to do by not allowing them to rehearse the wrong thing I get ahead of that and I show them what I would like them to do instead and it's so helpful when you do this right from the beginning with a really young puppy someone said is my puppy's 10 weeks is that too soon no that's not too soon at all because we're making it really simple we're not using any force we're not manhandling the puppies at all we're simply using a motivator that they would really like and we're luring them and showing them what we want them to do so there's no um 
um, negative reinforcement at all at this stage. It's all setting them up to be successful. Okay, I like this. I'm going to uh, answer this. We have a uh, super chat from Rebecca, uh, but Kat says, uh, we uh, we are a no, uh, have a no-yard puppy, uh, so walks are mandatory for us. We focused on leash skills. Not going for walks is not an option, but we do the inside leash thing and work on distraction training a, a lot. Good. It's great. But you also, walks, walks aren't necessarily mandatory, especially if you're struggling. There's some way way better ways to exercise your dog mm-hmm. than going for a walk. I'm talking like infinitely better Yeah. because you can build relationship. Walks Walks, walks don't really tire dogs out. No, no. They're they just don't. like a the, I view them as like an easy way to like get their body moving so it's better for them to go to the bathroom and it, it depends yeah. on what the walk is, but if you're just going for a leash walk, typically that's not enough to tire a young dog out. We published a video, have we published a video? Yeah, we published a video uh, a couple of weeks ago that talks about restraint recalls. Dan, maybe you can drop a link to that. Mm. Dan, lots of links. Luton is in the chat tonight, our moderator man. Um, and that would be a great exercise for your puppy. Games like tug, maybe you can uh, develop a short fetch working on your retrieve. Mm-hmm. Like that's the kind of relationship building stuff that's uh, you have to be a part of. Like I, that's why I love the game of tug. Yeah. Like I love that sort of play, um, a playtime settle and sit. I yeah. mean, it's not super uh, energetic, not about all about energy, yeah. but great leadership Hallway building. Hallway recalls. Hallway recalls, like mm-hmm. all of this stuff. Because it's so focused on you um, that it's it's hard to it's hard to you know for your dog to get distracted because it's all about you mm-hmm. and it's a great way to build relationship and leadership and then once you've gotten in some of those reps gotten in some of that exercise then you start seeing success you can start doing shorter walks yeah. you can start doing successful walks and you don't feel like you're struggling and now that's not to say that you're never going to walk your dog you've got to get to that point eventually but I want you to focus on really you know, uh, uh, intentional exercises yeah. first that focus on you. It can make a huge difference. This is the thing that I learned mm-hmm. um, uh, as a student going to McCann Dogs. It made a huge difference. Absolutely. I want to go really quickly over um, that opening of, uh, you know, what that might look like if you have an energetic, wild, bouncy dog. We have a few more, uh, several things that we want to talk about tonight uh, that that will like be in your walks. Things to think about while you're walking. I see a couple great questions out here. We're talking from, about before the walk, right? Yeah, now. this is before the walk. So this is: Is your dog ready? We just I, we just mentioned that. I want you to think about: Is your dog ready? We're going to take a look at to how instructor Carol and works on this. Does your dog just want to explode out that door? Because going outside is fun. So if I open that door, you can see she's ready to blast. Freya's pretty excited to go out, and that's pretty common. Does your dog? just want to explode out that door because going outside is fun. So if I open that door, you can see she's ready to blast. So I'm going to hold that leash so that she can't actually get out until she looks at me. And why do I care about that? She is so focused on the outside. Nothing else exists about getting through that door. If I just hold her here, it's like a magic force field. At some point, she's going to now, does your dog do this? I mean, Carol has been t- talking to the camera. And this is one of the hard parts we have about creating instructional videos for you and managing a dog <laughs> is that, yeah. you know, the dog's like, okay, what on earth is going on? I'm ready to go outside. Does your dog line up at the door like this? Like, I can't wait to get outside because it's really cool. Yeah. She's going to go, what the heck? And she's going to look at me. And when she looks at me, I'm going to immediately say, okay. So it's doing a couple of things. One, in order for her to look at me, she needs to control herself, which means she's not as wild. And two, she's learning there's some rules to going through that door. Ready, girly? What's out in the big? Now, if Carol were dead set on going for a walk, like maybe this is you at home and you're thinking like, boy, I gotta walk the dog, it's after dinner, or boy, I need to walk my dog for one reason or another, Mm -hmm. then what would happen next is you'd likely say like, oh, geez, didn't work that time, and then you'd go for your walk. That's right. It's really important that teaching your dog to walk on a loose leash, which is what Carol's doing right Mm -hmm. now, and taking your dog for a walk are separate things. This is why we focus on uh, steps like this, super accessible, easy for you to do, but also intentional. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to commit some time to it. it requires patience. Okay. Also, she until she decides. Good girl. All right. Good girl. So last time yeah, I said okay, girl. and she got. Yeah. Now Carol goes through it a couple of times. Uh, I don't. I don't know that we need to watch each event uh, or each time she does it. But I think that, uh, 
I think that is a good example of what we're talking about. You know, we want, this is the focus that we want. If you have a dog who's just completely bananas on walks and is giving you no attention, then you need to start here. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can't go for a walk the first few days. You need to work yeah. on maybe sit in control at your side. Mm -hmm. And that's as far as you get because you're going to introduce some of the other exercises to, 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 you know, get some of that energy yeah. out. I think that's why it's so important that you understand, like, if you look at that, if you do that five or six times, the dog's not really going to get very physically tired. They'll get mentally tired for sure, because there's a lot of thinking involved, but they won't get very physically tired. So during the process of training your dog to walk on a loose leash and to walk with you, it is important that you, again, are finding other ways to exercise your dog. So they are getting that outlet. I know we have um, a puppy that that's approaching a year old now, which is absolutely mind boggling to me. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I didn't take him on very many walks for the first couple of months that we had him because he was still learning to walk. But we really focused on teaching him how to play fetch. Um, we did a lot of restraint recalls where Ken would hold him and I would dangle a, a tug toy out in front and I would call him and he would race after me to get the tug toy. So he was getting that running, that sprinting, that playing out yeah. um, all towards us so that he was tired. <laughs> and then I might let him have a little snooze and then I might get him out and work on some of these exercises like you just saw Carol do with, with Freya so that he was getting to use his mind, but also he was still getting the exercises that he required as a young dog, um, but he wasn't rehearsing poor walking skills because he was just in the process of learning. So um, it, it's it's a hard it's a hard thing, but it makes such a difference in yeah. the long run. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we've talked about the R. Is your dog ready? And we've talked, given you a couple of R. strategies. R. That's a, a pirate. Everybody thinks that's a pirate's favorite letter, but you know what it actually is? Um, I know the answer to this. The C. Right. right, that's right. right. Um, is your dog ready? So the next is the E. When we talk about our, our reds steps is the E. And I've seen a couple of questions come up about equipment. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rebecca B Greenspan and also Ali Campbell mentioned uh, that she's a dog walker and sitter. But Rebecca B Greenspan dropped a $10 super chat uh, asking a question about an eight-month-old cavi. So equipment should be the, one of the first things that you think about when you're walking your dog. We love to, you start on a flat buckle collar, just a normal flat buckle collar, super simple. We always choose ones with um, like the metal buckle so that it doesn't slip and we live in Canada and it's freezing cold now. So uh, we've seen those, the <laughs> plastic buckles break, although they're convenient. The metal buckles are more reliable and mm, less safer. likely. Yeah, they're safer. Mm -hmm. But you start with a flat buckle collar. But if your walking training isn't going well, then it might be time for a change of equipment. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about going out and buying a fancy harness with 17 different uh, pull mechanisms on it because having control of your dog's head is really important yeah. whether it's the the neck with that flat buckle collar or something that we love and we actually get specially made for us a special version is something called a gentle mm -hmm. leader and it, d it does a great job of like it controls the dog's nose so if they start to pull they can't you know they sort of get turned so that they can't really lean in and the other thing that's so helpful about it we noticed this when we were away walking our dogs our one dog um wears a gentle leader and uh, what's nice is you can turn their head away from the distractions. When the leash is attached to the back with a harness, the dogs can still pick things up with their mouth. Yeah. They can still get into other dogs' faces and stuff because they can just sort of wiggle around everywhere. So when your dog's in training, you do want to have your, your leash attached to their neck in some sort, whether it's through a collar or as Ken's suggesting, a gentle leader. Gentle leaders are so great for dogs that pull a lot or sniff a lot or disengage a lot because it just gives you that much more control. And the name is perfect because it, it's gentle. It's passive on the dog, it's powerful, yeah. um, but it doesn't hurt the dog. So that's what we really like about it. It really um, affects a lot of change without having to be very negative. Um, it's also really great for all sizes of dogs as well, which we really like. So Rebecca, super chat. I have an eight month old cavi. I've been using a gentle leader, but her sitter won't use it. Her sitter is a sweet, gentle senior. Um, gentle senior, not using the gentle leader. Uh, so what can I do? Mm. Now Rebecca, this is That's gonna hard. come down to communication. You know, yeah. you're gonna have to explain uh, how important it is, especially if, uh, it, you know, it, if your dog is wild and crazy, it's amazing the transformation that the dog gets when they have, when you have control of their mm -hmm. nose. The dogs that fuss the most are the ones that need it the most. Yeah. You, how often do we see that? 
But but communication with the your, your dog sitter is going to be really important. Here's all the reasons why it's a good idea, and then maybe help show her. Yeah. Show her how I to use it. I think it's important. Um, you know, it would be interesting to know why she doesn't want to use it. The fact that you say the sweet, gentle senior maybe thinks that she thinks it's mean or something like that. Um, but, you know, it's important that you explain that consistency is really important. Yeah. And what we're doing is trying to create a lot of consistency and clarity for our dog. Because at the end of the day, they're who's most important uh, in this situation we want to make sure the dog's getting consistent information um so that they can learn and they can and they can grow um and the thing with the gentle leader is the more that they wear it and the more fun stuff that they do with it on yep. they you know faster they become accustomed to it so um i think it's just going to need to be a bit more of a, a conversation unfortunately it would be great if we could say oh we'll just do this instead but our recommendation is for you to use the gentle leader in all situations and just see if you can have a good conversation with your sitter and, and try and get her on board because it is the best thing because consistency is the best thing for your puppy for sure and this sort of leads us into this next question uh mary h Hi, turning, mary. turning the lights blue the four dollar super sticker thank you mary i do <laughs> love that uh that adorable super sticker um just ali campbell had mentioned uh i'm a dog walker what's your advice for training a dog i see intermittently the puppy's about five months old and very strong she pulled me to the ground the other day and this is a perfect situation for something like a gentle leader. Mm. If you know, it, it's the right piece of equipment that gives you, it's like power steering. It, it really is. Yeah. The great part about the gentle leader is that you can train off of it. The whole goal yeah. of the gentle leader so you, of it. Yeah. Yeah, is that you don't need it anymore. So yeah. that you can slip the nose loop off and it just becomes a flat buckle collar. But something for you, Ali, that might be simple is just an equipment change. As you know, maybe that's part of your, the tools that you have for your dog walking is, you know, some dogs that love to pull, putting on a gentle leader might mm -hmm. be a great option for you. Yeah. And maybe ask them about how the dog walks for them. You know, if the dog's doing a lot of pulling, maybe the gentle leader would be a great way for them to enjoy their walks totally. a, a little bit more as well. So yeah, Mar it's all about communication. Maro says, uh, as a gentle leader, you'd recommend that over the Halty brand? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because um, the, the reason the gentle leader is so great is that, uh, number one, it doesn't slide up and down the dog's snout if it's fit correctly, but also it's built to, so that you can uh, wean off of it so that you can, mm -hmm. when the dog's being successful in some skills or part of the walk or whatever mm -hmm. is appropriate, you can slip the nose loop off yeah. and right away it becomes a flat buckle collar. Yeah. You can continue your training. Things start to the go poorly. The dogs also mm -hmm. can't like back out of it. Halties, yeah. uh, halties can get out. Just, we're not sponsored by Jeff no, no, Leader, yeah, just so yeah. you know. We're literally telling we you just, this because we truly believe yeah. in the product and use it ourselves. And I, it, yeah. cha it changed my walks with yeah. my dog. Uh, it just made a huge yeah. difference. So we talked about E, and the first thing we talked about was the equipment. Next one's exercise. Is, and I know someone mentioned this earlier, you know, is the walk the only exercise your dog is getting during the day? Well, mm -hmm. it's no wonder that they're full of beans and wanting to pull you down the street. Yeah. I said this to you in the car, I think we were driving home from Florida a few days ago, yeah. and remember I said to you that people just generally don't exercise their dogs enough, and yeah. they wonder why, and the reason why it had come up is our dogs had just spent two days basically in the car because we were traveling, and they didn't get their normal exercise, and uh, both of them, when we got home, especially our puppy, were just, they were bananas, like yeah. they were just wild, yeah. not bad, but just like way more energetic yeah. than they normally are. And I had said to Ken, like, I can't believe the difference in their behavior with just two days of not their regular exercise. And it just made me think about all of the dogs out there that are driving families crazy. And this is the dog that they get all of the time because the dogs just are not getting enough exercise. So yeah. exercise is really important. And it is really also important as dog trainers to tell you that we don't we're not recommending that exercise means you, you know, take them to an off-leash park and no. sit there on your phone while your dog tires no. themselves out. No, that's the last thing we want you to do because the amount yeah. of dogs that come into us who are like, oh boy, something happened at the park. Yeah, and or they problem. just forget that you exist because yeah. they learn that having fun elsewhere is better. Totally. So, you know, the type of exercise that we would recommend that you do are things, it does take more time for sure, but things that you would be doing with your dog together. And we've mentioned some of that before with retrieving and things like that. Um, hiking with your dog you know things like that that are going to get your dog active and out together um, but it makes a massive difference in your dog's overall behavior For sure. um, uh, yeah 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 so we've talked about equipment we've talked about exercise I mean that I, I don't want to belabor that um, but it, yeah. exercise is really important next we need to talk about environment yeah. is this the right place to be doing your walking training I this is a really important one I work as a firefighter I have for 
over 20 years. And uh, I remember going, it was like, it was either the wee hours of the night or the wee hours of the morning. It was really late. And we went to an alar alarm bells call at a high rise. And we were, we were in the, uh, I was in the parking garage. And someone was doing walking training with their dog. Really? Oh, it's great. And, yeah. And were they a student? No, no. Really? Yeah. Uh, they were doing walking training. And That's I remember awesome. thinking, like, I walked out and I was looking for the alarm, the whatever. I was looking for the sprinkler stuff. And uh, I, they were out there and they were doing training, rewarding their dog. It was kind of dark. I just yeah, remember wow. that's what I really remember about it. It was kind of cold. Uh, but they were they had chosen an environment with no other people around. Yeah. It was quiet. It was, you know, there's there are some distractions, but they were being super successful because they intentionally found a spot that isn't busy. Yeah. And they were able to see some success. So you need to consider, what's a great spot I can do my leash walking training? I'll tell you, and, and we've seen in lots of our videos, Maybe that's the living room. Maybe yeah. it's your hallway. Maybe it's love a good hallway. Maybe it's session. the hallway leading to your apartment. Maybe it's a basement wall that's kind of long. Maybe it's the side of your house. It doesn't matter what it is, but you need to figure out a location that you can be successful with your dog. Mm -hmm. And they're not just thinking, go to the park, go to the park, go to the park, go to the park, or oh, dog, dog, mm -hmm. there's a cat, there's a truck, or whatever. You know, find an environment where you can be successful and it will change your leash walking. Yeah, training. I was actually just thinking as you were saying, I think we should probably embellish as to why we would choose something like the hallway or something oh, long yeah. and skinny because it's very natural to us. So one of the reasons why we like to start off in a place that sort of longer and you know skinnier area um, is because it diminishes the amount of things that your dog can get distracted by yeah. so when we're first start starting our puppy training we have a hallway in our home we shut all the doors to the hallway we put all the other older dogs away put them behind the baby gate so that just the puppy is just one-on-one -on -one with us and there's very little distractions and that way the puppy is rehearsing going up and down following the food at our left hand side they really don't know what they're doing at that stage they just sort of think well look at me i'm following the food i'm beside you my leash is loose and they start to learn to kind of think wow this thing that we're doing together is kind of fun um <clears throat> but the the hallway is a really great option so i wouldn't start my walking training like outside in the middle of the backyard when like a squirrel or a bird or all these things could just pop in pop you know into to my training session, I'm going to find a, a spot or a location where I can control the environment so that I only have to focus on the puppy and the dog and, and the attention that I'm getting. So I, this is really important. And we get a lot of people who think like, well, I don't want to walk with food forever. And I don't have to have treats in my hand the yeah. whole time. I, neither do we. This no. is really important. And what do you think your dog is thinking about when you choose these quiet locations where they can't be, they mm -hmm. can't be struggling and you're giving them food? They're thinking yeah. about the food, but what are you really trying to do? You're trying to teach them that it's valuable yeah. to be in this position at my side. It doesn't matter if they're walking yet or not. They're donkey and carrot. Yeah. That's the point, is that we want to teach them that it's really worth it to, to, to remain right here. Also teach them that when they end up there, they're going to get something yeah. great. Dogs aren't naturally, they, there's no desire to walk at our side. No. You know, there's no reason they should be there. We've sort of introduced them into this human world. And they we want to walk out ahead and that's investigate. Right, and explore and mm -hmm. just do their own thing. Go and visit people and other dogs and mm -hmm. things. But we need to teach them that this is more valuable. You're, you're, you're sure to get something good if you're right here. Yeah. And that's a great way to start. Yeah, and I think food is very much like, in walking training anyways, it's very much like, you know, training wheels on a bike. You know, you you have it on there and the, the wheels so they're making sure that you can actually go through the the motions of riding the bike but you're not actually doing it by yourself same thing with the food the food's there to help the dog go through the motions and to rehearse doing it correct but sooner or later you got to take the training wheels off and um and then see how it goes until you're able to do it without the aid of the food there so it's exactly the same uh, process but unfortunately some people skip to riding the bike without the training wheels a little bit too soon and then it doesn't go well absolutely and then you crash <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you don't want that. Make sure you're wearing your helmet. Um, so uh, Rachel Hanley asked a question about uh, how long does it, her dog uh, rubs at the gentle leader, the nose loop? How yeah. long does that last? We actually have a video that talks about this. As like long as you, it. as long as you let it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, that's sometimes something that dogs will do if they, they sort of think like oh this is a funny thing on my face um, but uh, you have to interrupt them when they do that by just taking a hold of the leash and lifting up on the gentle leader and just telling them to settle or saying leave it um, until the dog settles and then you're going to give a slack to the leash so that the gentle leader relaxes on their head once again um, and then you got to get them busy got to get them working got to get them thinking about something else try not just to let them do nothing with the gentle leader on keep them busy that's 
really helpful. Um, yeah, we, ha- so we have a video. Not on, thinking about it. Totally. We have a video on this topic, and it's something like uh, I tried using a gentle leader or something like that. Um, it was with, My dog hates a gentle leader. With final, I, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, it's on the channel somewhere. Um, so he, I hope, hope you can find it. Maybe Dan can find it. Um, great uh, point from Sue Kay. Uh, we're week six of the Life Skills Program. It's been wonderful in progressing from early training, luring, to more difficult nice. walking, adding distractions. And that's absolutely Thanks, the case, Sue. Uh, you know, when you start with success, it's so much easier than putting your dog in a situation where you're likely to struggle because you can't reinforce them. They're being, some dogs are just rewarded by seeing stuff, by yeah. being out in front and like being around motion. And it's, yeah. it's just very rewarding for them. So you break it down into smaller parts, you're more likely to be successful. We talk a lot about leash walking in our life skills program. Aaron just shared it. My dog hated the gentle leader. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, 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 And how you can, um, you know, step by step with help of an instructor in our life skills program Mm -hmm. for dogs over five months, um, you, you can learn leash walking with the help of a McCann Dogs instructor. Mm-hmm. So we drop a link in uh, the chat somewhere. You guys, you can join us. Uh, weekly calls, probably a call on Monday. This upcoming Monday. Every call, uh, on uh, call every single Monday, we yeah. do a live uh, Zoom call with the instructors and we talk about all kinds of topics. Yep. Sometimes we talk about walking on leash, actually just kind of like this, but a little bit more detailed. Um, and, and you get daily all kinds feedback of other things. from like a McCann Dogs instructor. Yeah, to we'll fix watch your you problems. walk your dog and we'll be able to tell you exactly how you should hold the leash differently, yeah. about your timing, about your body language, about where you're practicing, about, you know, all of that stuff. Make sure that you're doing things the way that um, that you should and, and to allow you to get success. Yeah. Um, so we've talked about, is your dog ready? We've talked about exercise, environment and equipment in the, in the E's. Now it's time for the D. Distance, duration, and dinner time. Dinner time. Dun, dun, dun. You the, switched up the D's. The, yeah, that's right. The distance, you're taking your dog for a walk. Something that people will often do is say, okay, we're going to go We're gonna go leash walking training. I'm going to go around the block twice. And uh, the whole time I'm going to try to maintain some blah, blah, blah. And, and then it completely crashes and burns. Mm-hmm. Think about the distance that you can be successful. Maybe it begins with up and down your uh, sidewalk. Maybe you do uh, uh, three lamp posts down and then you turn around. Um, What we don't want you doing is going out and practicing. This happens so often. You don't want to go out and have your dog do brilliantly halfway on the walk. And then halfway home, you've run out of treats. You've sort of gotten tired and distracted and you're hungry. And, you know, it's just too much. So you need to be consistent with your training. So plan shorter distances. Keep those training sessions short, concise, sweet, and make sure that you're successful because you're going to soon encounter times when you do need to be able to think on your feet. You do need to be able to like uh, redirect your dog or like you're going to come into tougher challenges. But don't don't set that up at the beginning. Don't put your dog in those situations if your dog is learning. This is stuff that's a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. But if you're struggling with with leash walking, if you need to fix your leash walking, make sure you're planning an appropriate distance. Norma, (laughs) just said at my funeral, check my pockets. I'll probably have a poop bag and a pocket full of treats. This is so true. You know what? This is a good point. I love it, Norma. Let's, uh, and thank you for the super chat. I haven't tooted tonight. So Um, let's talk about the fact that even though we have several trained dogs at home and uh, a puppy in training, that we'll often like go out for a walk or when we go walking training, we'll still take treats yeah. so that we can randomly reward them yeah. for that. Yeah, yep. Uh, we just do it very randomly because dogs aren't robots. <laughs> dogs are dogs are animals, and they need reinforcement for things. And you know, you can reinforce things a lot, and then you can ride the wave for weeks, months, you know, for a while, where the dog's just super sharp at listening. And then sometimes you see them f- get a little bit sloppy or a little bit slow, and you just have to go back and and reward a little bit more or get after them for being a little bit slow, and you know spruce up your training a little bit and then you ride for another few more months that's that's how it how it works um and you know because with our training anyways we're looking we have really high expectations for our dogs i don't want to have to ask them to do things a million times before they respond i'm looking for a really um reliable and fast reaction and so that requires upkeep on my part on my training yeah these are perishable skills yeah to make sure that i'm i'm reinforcing um often enough that um that i'm still getting the type of product or the type of behavior that I'm I'm looking for but you don't have to do it all of the time especially once they get um, once they get a little bit more um, further into their training we dive deep into another skill we call leash respect 
And um, the reality is, it's not something that we'll talk about tonight. This is something we focus heavily on in our in-class and online training. Yeah. Like we really, we think this skill is uh, is really important for Valuable. you to have. And when we were in Florida, I remember, actually I might've mentioned it to you, mm-hmm. saying the amount of time that the, dog, the dogs were practicing leash respect versus let's go walking or heel walking, it, I mean, it's substantially more. Mm-hmm. We, we, we don't want the dog to pull on leash, but we don't need them in that tight walk at our side. Mm-hmm. But when we do need it, there were times when we'd go into the Coliseum or arena yeah. and uh, we'd need the dog tight in at our side. because tons of people busy. around. Other and, dogs, there's dog yeah. toys, like racks of dog toys. Yes. And we need them to be right in at our side. But most yeah. of the time we're teaching a leash respect. So, yeah. I mean, that's something else. If uh, you end up uh, training with us online or in class, that's something we talk about. We have a video, yeah. we have a couple of videos sort of um, that that uh, approached the subject actually maybe Dan could drop this link I think we touched on it in um, change change your leash walking or something like that or you're there are three kinds of leash walking something to that effect anyway really valuable skill and um, honestly the uh, let's go or uh, heel walking is super valuable but that's not the only way you can walk your dog. Um, I had another comment to to say about the distance. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the distance and not going for, you know, long walks until you're ready to do that. Um, something that I ended up doing with our uh, puppy is, you know, he got to the point pretty quickly, actually, where he was walking very well uh, in the house, you know, around the dining room table, up and down the hallway with the treats and the, and the leash. You know, he was a little rock star very quickly. And I think you'll find when you do it with your puppy, you're going to think, wow. They're so good at this, but you don't necessarily, you can't necessarily go from that to going for the the long walk. So what I started to do was rather than actually go out on my street for a walk, I would actually walk him just in my driveway. Now our driveway is actually not very long at all. Um, And so we would just walk back and forth and around in different patterns. And we, you know, initially when I I did that, when he was young, he was very distractible. He's a puppy. Um, And so I worked until that was a little bit more reliable by rewarding him. Uh, And then I started to integrate more distractions just in my driveway. So I'm starting to make progressions without going on this huge, long distance walk. And I'm, I'm challenging him in a way that he's learning how to be a good listener, but it's still controlled so that I'm not out, you know, 20 minutes from the house and, you know, some disastrous thing happens. I'm really controlling it. So it's not really about the distance or the duration. It's about working towards those things very gradually when your dog's showing you that they're ready to be pushed in that way. Um, And you'll know by your dog's behavior it, it, it's either going to be great or it's or it's not and if it's not you need to make changes to find yourself uh, a progression or a level once again where your dog's having success and then you'll push forward from there Th- this is so too many this people is, let their dogs be wrong for too long 100 percent. Mm-hmm. and this is such a huge part of what we do and what we believe in and what we try to help you yeah. with on the channel is is it, it's about you know doing your best to help the dog out to be successful but then you know, building that motivation and that drive, like, so the dog's excited to train. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if they're not interested, invested in the training, then, you know, I I published a video a long time ago that talked about magnets. And it was a little bit complex of an idea. I thought it might make it unique, interesting. I thought it'd be helpful for you, but it didn't quite land. So when you go for walks, I want you to think about the fact that uh, everything around you is a magnet and your dog is magnetic and all of these things around you your dog walks by and they they're starting to get attracted towards it's not that they're leaving you it's that they're attracted to these other magnets so what are you going to do to be the strongest magnet in the room what's that thing that's going to make you completely magnetic and your dog going to want to just be at your side and paying attention to you even with all of these other magnets out in the uh, in the world That's when we talk about things like keeping the distance short, keeping the duration short so that we end with a motivated dog so that they're excited about training. It's also why we talk a little bit about dinner time. When we have a hungry dog who's you're using their meal for for training, they're much more likely to pay attention to Mm -hmm. you and will often do our walking training. There's probably a million video clips across Instagram and YouTube Mm -hmm. and on our channel and like everywhere about it that's like sunset. And we're out there doing walking yeah. training. And that's why you need to be the strongest yeah. man. Let's talk a little bit about why you train at dinner time. Yeah, because you have a puppy that is starting to anticipate, 
eating at that time so they're hungry they're ready for food they're a little bit more willing to work for whatever you have you don't want to be training your dog where you're wanting a lot of motivation and drive you don't want to be training your dog with food after they've had a full meal because they're going to be full they're not going to be into it anymore um one of the tactics that we love to do for all kinds of our training not even just specific to walking um is to take half of their breakfast or their 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 dinner and do some training with their actual meal especially if you're not in a very distracting environment like if you're just at home when there's not much going on using their meal is a great way to um you know get them working for their food building a lot of attention and you're banking on a time where the dog's already invested in food because they're hungry to begin with. Um, We even suggest sometimes when people come to our classes, like don't feed them before you come. Don't give them dinner at six and then come to a class at 6.30 because the dogs just, they don't want food anymore and it's really challenging to get them to to work. So you wanna get them hungry and excited to work for the treats and the food. The um, chat's zipping down, but someone had asked, and I apologize whoever asked the question said, um, is uh, the tight, Uh, healing uh, leash walking different than less formal let's go walking and yes Mm -hmm. it is in fact uh, we teach uh, more tight formal heel and things like our rally obedience and in our obedience classes but that it's similar well you know that you just it you don't have that same precision when you're doing the formal leash walking but all it's a it's you're setting the dog up for a similar uh, effect or impact it's just not as precise does that make sense yeah yeah Um, the other question from Sue K and I like this question, is do you teach with me heel and leash respect, which is less formal, at the same time, or do you teach heel first and leash respect second? Um, We usually start with teaching um, heel first, uh, and then we branch into leash respect after that. And the reason why we do it that way, it sort of seems a bit odd that we do it that direction since, you know, you will be using leash respect more of the time, um, is if you start off by give, building a lot of value for your dog being very close to you, that actually really helps um, leash respect quite a bit. Um, so we usually start with heel first and then leash respect um, second. Um, however, you're not gonna like train heel to completion before you right. start leash respect. We just start it for a little bit just to build a little bit of value and then you can start to integrate your leash respect stuff in there as well. Yeah. Really important. I'm just waiting for our uh, thing to update here because I want to talk about this. So many shades of daring. Uh, I totally made a lot of mistakes. I leave my dog's food out to let her eat on her own. Now we talk about dinner time and uh, you know how valuable it can be mm-hmm. as a training resource. We also talk about Kale talked about portioning some of that food out so that you don't always have to train it yeah. whatever your dinner time is, so that you, you're not dogs not getting tons of food. But free feeding is a bad idea for a lot of reasons. Yeah. And from the training perspective, it certainly devalues the food. Yeah. So it. it and which then devalues you. Right. Remember, yeah. you need to be the strongest magnet in the room. If you have the best thing going, if you have that one, uh, the, maybe it's a toy even. I mean, we don't talk a lot about that, but mm-hmm. um, it could be a toy for some dogs. Um, uh, if you have that super valuable kibble that they get when you're, they're meal fed, you know, twice a day, three times a day, whatever your schedule is, then um, that food's going to be way more valuable. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to be way more valuable. Yeah. There's also a lot of health benefits as well to... Yeah. Um, to meal feeding your dog versus totally. free feeding your dog. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we that's not something that we that we recommend. You, you want to be able to uh, monitor, and our vet always says your dog's ins and outs. You know yep. how much how much is going in, how much is coming out, because that can be an early indication that something's wrong. Yep. Uh, or something has changed. Yeah. So uh, we've talked about ready. Uh, is your dog ready? We've talked about environment, exercise, and equipment. We've talked about distance, duration, and dinner time. Training when your dog's hungry or mm-hmm. using food as a motivator. And we did need to talk about the speed that you're walking at. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people, and you might be doing this, I want you to be really uh, self-aware the next time you go for a walk, how fast are you walking? There's a lot of people when they're like, okay, I've got my leash gathered up, I've got my stick of juicy fruit, the taste is gonna move you. I the cadence of that. Um, you've got your leash all gathered up, <laughs> you've got your treats on your side, you're ready to start your, <laughs> start your walks, and then you- The taste, the taste, the taste is gonna move, move ya. <laughs> And I was like, what's the second part of that yeah, thing that's so catchy? Yeah, I think catchy. that's it. I think we nailed it. Um, and then you start to slow down because you're thinking about all of these other things. You're thinking, is my leash loose? Is my dog in the right position? When what's you pop it in earth? your mouth or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Juicy fruit. It's gonna, gonna move ya. Yeah. Juice yourself. Yeah. Move Get right through, through ya. Juicy fruit. Okay, we the got it. The speed that you're walking at is important. Don't slow down. 
don't go too fast. You need to find a speed where it seems purposeful. And what, what is the value of walking at an appropriate speed with a dog? Yeah, it, it gives them less time to think about other things, really. You know, sometimes when we're thinking about a bunch of things, humans, you know, tend to walk slowly because they're like trying to coordinate eight things at the same yeah. time. And then they, yeah. you know, have to move slowly when that happens. Um, but that just gives your dog so much time to look around and to, to think about other things. Dogs are really attracted to motion as well. Um, they're, they have that innate chase drive within them. So if you stride out like you're you know late for something or you're ready to go and yeah. the dogs sometimes have to go, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm coming with you. Where are you going to? Um, I've actually used my pace when I've run out of treats momentarily, I'll just sort of keep moving along and walking quickly and talking to them and helping them and, and engaging with them as I get a little bit more food ready. And sometimes, oh, there we go. Um, sometimes the dogs don't even realize. So uh, walking fast really does um, really does help the dogs to stay engaged. Um, and again, but that can be hard to do. Did you if mention not too fast? We, are, we have a video. It's no, I didn't like say not too five, fast. Five ways to get uh, more attention on your walks. Yes. And we show a demonstration of maybe euchre walking too slow, walking too fast. Because sometimes yeah. that's that's overwhelming for the dogs. Maybe you've got they a little dog short legs. Yeah, and, it's and so exciting. At the leash. And, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So you, got, you want to be careful. You need to find that um, the right speed for your dog, yeah. and then you can uh, you'll 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 recognize it. The other thing is, if you're going too slow, they're just sniffing at the ground. Yeah. You know, they have an opportunity to pick up that pine cone or pick up that uh, whatever that, that 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 you're passing by. But if you're walking with that purposeful pace, they don't have as many opportunities to leave you. Um, was juicy fruit only in Canada? I don't know. Oh my goodness! Is it is it a Canadian thing? I don't know. Sue said that she doesn't remember that in Canada. Oh. Well, I did find out we were obviously in the states uh, in Florida, and we did have you get a juicy fruit. A puppy named Five Alive, which is a like very loved oh, Canadian. Yeah. Oh, that's a Canadian drink. Ca eh? Canadian drink, and yeah. when I, people were asking me what our puppy's name was, I was like Five Alive, and they were like, "Oh." And then I'd say. Oh, it's a Canadian fruit beverage. Yeah, That's, we'd uh, have to explain ourselves because juices. they thought that was just the weirdest name ever. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. So talking about the speed in our reds. Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it'll come to me. Um, acronym? Acronym. Uh, in, our, in our reds acronym. Kale mentioned it as well. She, she uses her voice. What are you yeah. saying? Focused on your speed, what are you saying that's going to maintain your dog's attention? And this can be really helpful, especially as you start to wean off the food. Mm -hmm. I recognize this, actually, I didn't mention this earlier, but uh, if in the chat, if their name's in blue, they're part of the McCann Dogs crew. And Instructor Robbie is one of our uh, trainers that's in the chat tonight. And Instructor Robbie was my first grade one life skills head instructor. And uh, I remember at some point, I... Um, <laughs> uh, I had to change sides of the room with Deegan and uh, I started, uh, it's their big, you know, training halls and I started over here and uh, I stood up and, you know, it was early on and I was, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I stood up and I made some like silly crack and I my, did a funny voice as I walked across the room and Robbie said, Ken, did you see that? Did you see the impact that your voice had? <laughs> and Deegan was in at my side. I was more interesting. No, what are you talking about, Dad? That's <laughs> right. Exactly. I was more interesting. So, you know, uh, on top of what your speed is, what you're saying can make a difference. Now, this doesn't mean that you're wandering along, just yammering the entire time, but you're being engaging with your dog. You know, you're, you're using your voice to like keep them motivated. When they're making great choices, maybe you walk by the fire hydrant, maybe you walk by there's a dog on the other side and they, they they look over and they check in with you. What are you going to do? Yeah. You acknowledge that. It's like, good, good boy. Way to go, buddy, or whatever. Or you could get really mm -hmm. bubbly and high-pitched like Kale. I love getting high-pitched yeah, and yeah. bubbly. So using your voice <laughs> can make a massive difference. And I, guys especially, any guys watching the live stream tonight, and I remember. Let your uh, hair down. That's right. Yeah. It, it's, it, Don't the be afraid with, to be silly. With, with the students who would come in class and they wouldn't want to say anything. They didn't want, I don't know whether it was embarrassing for them or yeah. they just weren't, I don't know, just weren't comfortable. But then you get in a room of dog trainers, even if it's, uh, you know, a bunch of you male dog trainers. You have to compete to be the loudest. That's right. It's, yeah. it's deafening. But they know that that's what's going <laughs> so to. True. To build, it's not forever either. That's what's going to build that initial mm -hmm. desire, drive, um, you know, uh, uh, a history of reward for your dog because they, they're in position. You can, you know, give them the treats, whatever. That's what's going to build that foundation for you. 
so that over time you can go on quieter walks. You mm-hmm. can go on walks with less trees. You can go on walks that aren't that hurried pace. It's yeah. the beginning. This is where you start. Yeah, totally. Um, spin. Yeah. Talking about it's not and the spin that you're probably thinking about. Yeah, I'm not. Ta- I'm not talking about spinning in a circle. I'm not talking about uh, spinning like a top. I'm talking about turning, changing directions. Yeah, a great way to work. An about on, turn, uh, if you will. Yeah, or maybe you know, maybe you go out to. I was thinking about this the other day. I, I did this with Deegan, and I don't know why it uh, crossed my mind, but um, I remember being in a soccer field very near where we live, and um, just doing 90 degree turns with her. You know, mm. just walking because it's the less old predictable. Box square routine. Right, exactly. Yep. Works very well. I practice well. my right turns, and then yep. I practice my left turns, and then I change it up just to keep it interesting. Yeah. But uh, the the value the value of a turn is twofold. Number one, it uh, it almost requires your dog to be in position, especially if you're turning left. Yeah. It requires your dog to be in position, or if you're doing a 180 degree about turn and you go the other way, your dog has to work pretty hard to maintain that position, yeah. and then you're going the other direction. But Consider this. When you go on your leash walks right now, do you go the same direction? Does your dog know where you're going? Are they anticipating where you're going next? And they know that, well, you know what? It doesn't really matter how we walk because we're getting there. And I can't wait to get there. This is too much fun. Uh, uh, I'll drag you there because I want to get there faster. So using turning while you're walking your dog can be really advantageous. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, Daniel Amaro, uh, uh, will getting neutered change the way your dog walks? Hmm. Um, no, probably not. No, it's unlikely. Nope. Um, I think that people really like to think that if they get their dog spayed or neutered, that like behaviors will just naturally correct themselves. You know why? Because it's easy. Yeah. Just take the dog to the vet, they come back. Get him our surgery. You're good to go. Yeah. Uh, what I will say, though, is that, um, you know, if you have a male dog and you do get them neutered, it can change um, things like how interested they are in sniffing, like, female dog scents. Um, you know, it sometimes can change their um, energy and what they're interested in and things like that, but it doesn't change whether they understand to walk with a loose leash totally, or not. Totally. So although it can help with some things, and, and and just to preface, some dogs that get neutered or spayed, there is zero change in them whatsoever. So this yeah. is this is just a thing. We're not advocating that you go out and get your dog spayed or neutered to help with your leash or walking. You should get your dog spayed or neutered. That's a healthy thing to do, but not in not in relation to, yeah, to not for dogs that walking. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, you know, mm-hmm. we get six hundred dogs a week come through the training facility and we see lots of dogs before and after mm-hmm. uh, just because of the way the timing falls. And mm-hmm. um, you know, it's uh, everyone uh, seems to be like especially for marking is the other one in the house. Yeah. I think like, well, I guess I should get him neutered because he's marking in the yeah, house. Yeah, well, sometimes it will become a habit and it's just not, it's really about the behavior and not about what's happening it, inside. Yeah, it's a supervision problem. Yeah. Yeah, for, yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, so not not an uncommon question, Daniel, but um, definitely uh, I think he'll filled in that in pretty well. The blanks. Now, um, the Reds strategy. Is your dog ready? Before you go for a walk, are you getting some attention or are they going completely crazy? We talked a little bit about some things mm-hmm. that you can do to, to build some value for you. You need to be the strongest magnet in the room. Mm-hmm. You have to remember that this environment is really rewarding and, and, and it's going to be very interesting for your young and dog. And don't forget the, the, the value starting with a win, even just starting with the dog sitting on a Ooh. loose leash in your in your doorway. That's, that's right. You know, that's more important than, you know, having them drag you on the walk. It starts It starts there. You know why? Because we're going for wins. We're not going for walks. And I love saying that there because it's so now true. Now you have a, a YouTube um, title name. That's right. I don't know we're what that is. We're going for oh, wins, That's right. Walks. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You are going for wins. Taking your dog for a walk and training your dog to walk unleashed, two different things. So you're yeah. going out there to get wins at every step along the way because we're focused on knowing if your dog's get ready. Get that W. Environment, exercise, equipment. Think about those three things. Mm-hmm. Is your dog ready for that? The distance, duration. And is it dinner time? Is your dog... Is your dog, does your dog desire food? Because that can be really helpful while you're walking. What are you saying? What's your speed? Are you turning? Those things can make a big difference Mm -hmm. when it comes to teaching your dog to walk on a loose leash. Now, I'm going to uh, pass you guys along to the new McCann Dogs music channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, if you, you know, you leave the house for the day, uh, put on some relaxing music for your dog. We do it. It's a great idea. A lot of dogs find it super, uh, 
uh, what's the word? It's sort soothing. of like it's soothing. It is soothing. Yeah, because yeah, it sort of fills the space with. Uh, uh, I think it also music. for our one dog. She's a little bit sound sensitive, so it drowns out like the noise of loud trucks in the background, or you know, if they're chewing on a you know bone, or if they have a peanut butter kong or something, and you have the the music on, then you know you can kind of slip out the door, and they can't really 100%. hear as much. Like it, it's yeah. just it's a really great thing to use. It's super great when you're traveling, um, that type of stuff. Totally. Um, I did want to say really quickly um, for those people who may be interested in seeing like our agility side of things that's where Ken and I were in Florida last week competing I was there competing in um and an agility competition, uh, a pretty big one. Um, but I documented the experience and posted all the information about uh, what that was. So if you're interested in that, you can check out the McCann's Dogs, McCann Dogs Agility Facebook or Instagram. And there's uh, actually channel. a McCann Dogs Agility YouTube channel, which is probably better. For there you is, too. but I didn't post it on there. So now that you're ready <laughs> to fix your leash walking training with all of the teaching, all of the training, all of the things we've talked about tonight, the rest, my friends, well, that is up to you. Happy training. Oh. We do these live streams to educate you, but more importantly, to motivate you. You can have the dog that you've always wanted, but it's just going to take you a little bit of work. I would know because I was just like you. Long before I became a dog trainer, I was a frustrated dog owner, but the skills that I learned at McCann's changed my life. Now we have hundreds of videos here on our YouTube channel to help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. But if you want someone to guide you through the dog training process, then you should check out our Puppy Essentials program for puppies under six months. If your dog is over six months, then you could join our Life Skills program and our instructors are gonna help to make sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible in a really supportive environment. All of the knowledge about dog training in the world won't help you to be successful unless you get up and you start training. The real question is, what are you going to train next? Happy training.